way uh, people are going to be reimbursed based on quality versus just giving a service. And then the last thing that we're seeing, uh, which is really changing things, is the impact of new science. Uh, there's a lot of things going on. What I'm going to talk about uh, today a little bit is personalized medicine, something you've probably heard about, but it's going to change a lot of the ways in which you interact with your uh, physician, and it's going to change the way that uh, drugs are brought to market and, and other devices and things like that. So <clears throat> regulatory reform, basically, you know, you've got a mature health system that's seeking sustainability and value. We all know that the population is aging, and you've got increasing cost pressure always. So <clears throat> what, what we're going to see here, as, as, as I mentioned, is you're going to be much more empowered to, to be the general contractor of your own care. The payment is going to be much more based on quality and outcomes, less on service. And you're going to start to see uh, people being ranked for quality. So I think we all understand that we're willing to pay more for higher quality. Uh, we talk about this with employers a lot with healthcare. You talk to uh, GM, you know, they'll say, hey, we're, we're happy to pay more for higher quality steel, but we have no idea what's higher quality healthcare, and we're paying everybody the same. Why is that? Tell us who's good, and we'll pay for that. Tell us who's bad, we won't pay as much. We're going to try and rank that, and that's probably never happened before. So I think everybody knows these things. We read about these all the time. Uh, they're in the paper. Uh, obviously, it's not sustainable how much money we're spending on health care. It's getting to be, you know, 30 to 40 percent of the, of the GDP in, in 20 years. So uh, there's no way we can support that. There's going to have to be some radical shift. Uh, the, uh, the insolvency prediction for Medicare is, is in the teens. So in less than 10 years, uh, Medicare will be insolvent uh, by current uh, practices and standards. So. There's things we got to do now to take care of this. <clears throat> we probably all know this. Healthcare is lagged behind other industries and all kinds of IT adoption areas. Uh, some of the IT spending is hidden because you don't necessarily see it coming out of the IT departments. You know, it's spent through biomed or, or more uh, strategic uh, departments in the hospital or, or with the life science companies. Uh, but obviously, there's more spending going to happen in the next few years. Uh, partially because of the ARA package and, and the High Tech Act. Uh, but there's, there's a huge amount of uh, available market opportunities within healthcare IT. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about uh, the healthcare reform. And probably some of these bullets are, are being negotiated at this very moment. Uh, so I'm not going to vouch for all those to be accurate. Uh, but the three prongs here are really around universal coverage. And I think we all kind of understand what that means. Uh, modernizing the system to reduce costs. As you can see, there's a, a 50 billion target for health IT over five years. That's a, a significant investment uh, for a market that's probably only uh, 10 to 20 billion a year. All right. So the whole market right now is about 10 to 20 billion. We're putting 50 billion in it in the next five years. Uh, comparative effectiveness is a big driver uh, for the Obama administration and for a lot of folks. Basically what comparative effectiveness is, is if you have alternate pathways for taking care of a disease or a condition, let's say there's a medical treatment and a surgical treatment, which one works better? Which one's more cost effective? Which one has a better patient outcome? Which one, in, in a sense, works better than the other? Those are really difficult to do because not only do you have to have real detailed information but you have to know it for a pretty long period of time. And you think about where that information would exist, there's no one place you can go grab it because you get care in the hospital, you get care from a clinic, you make a lot of lifestyle choices that impact your outcomes. So it's very difficult to do comparative effectiveness studies, but there's a lot of money, seed money being put into figuring out how to do that. And then the last thing is obviously focusing on wellness. That's been you know, a trademark of, of healthcare for a long time. There's actually things happening right now, including some of the consumer-driven healthcare uh, technology plays that really can help uh, monitor wellness and, and introduce um, pieces that can identify issues before they, they become serious. <clears throat> so we all know about the, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, $787 billion. I remember when a billion used to mean a lot. Uh, Seems like now that that's just thrown around easily. But $150 billion was for health care, $50 billion for health IT. So quite a bit of money put into this marketplace. I know I'm starting to see a lot of folks uh, that I've never dealt with before 
uh, non-traditional players in healthcare saying, hey, how can I get some of that money? So there's a lot of, lot of new uh, uh, customers coming into this marketplace, a lot of new uh, players, technology players, looking to enter the healthcare market. But there's still a huge amount of unmet needs. Uh, the 50 billion is really dedicated to a couple of things. Um, the incentive payments for an EMR, EHR, that's electronic medical record or electronic health record, basically to have doctors and hospitals implement electronic health records at their, at their uh, facilities. Uh, if you figure it out what it really costs to implement a health record uh, at a doctor's office, this, the, the stimulus package is really kind of like a a 35% off coupon, okay? It still takes more money to put it in than they're gonna get, but it's a pretty, it's a pretty nice uh, package to get you started. Uh, the second part, which I think is really key, is they beefed up the budget and the power of this Office of National Coordinator of Healthcare IT. Long title, people just call it the Healthcare IT Czar. His name uh, right now is Dr. David Blumenthal, came from Harvard. Basically, the, the value in that is they're gonna be able to drive standards for interoperability better than we ever have before. And I think everyone understands that you can't interoper uh, interoperably trade data unless there's standards of how to do it. And you know, you, you can take two hospitals on the same EMR vendor and try to get them to talk and it's very difficult because the nomenclature is different, uh, the way they, they code things is different. So we're, we're trying to drive standards out of that, that uh, national coordinator office. And they've had a, like a hundred fold increase in their budget. So. Uh, it, it's a pretty big deal that they've changed this. Uh, and then there's some other things too down at the bottom that are sort of infrastructure related. The VHA actually has a pretty uh, ambitious plan to connect every, every facility, every patient on one single database. So that will be uh, an, a nice data asset to leverage to do some of these comparative effectiveness studies because typically that's a captive audience. They don't venture outside of the VHA for care. Uh, so there, there's quite a bit of uh, capabilities there. They've actually built an EMR uh, that's open source right now, so you can go get it for free. Uh, it obviously takes a lot of time and effort to, uh, to assemble it and implement it at your facility, but it is a, a free piece of software. All right, uh, the term carrot and stick is used a lot. The carrot is the stimulus money, uh, but the, probably the bigger impact is really the stick part, which is if you don't exhibit meaningful use of an electronic medical record by 2015, your reimbursement will be impacted. You will get less money from Medicare Medicaid. And that's gonna have a huge impact on a lot of folks. And, and we actually see that as uh, an event that'll probably cause a lot of mergers and acquisitions in the hospital space because some people just won't get there and they'll just have to be picked up by, uh, by other facilities because uh, you know they, they won't, their margins are razor thin now. Any impact to their reimbursement is just gonna knock them out. So, 2015, uh, that stick starts hitting people. So for this dimension, uh, the regulatory reform, <clears throat> here's the real plays here around uh, being able to en enable coordinated care. So anything you can do as a technology company that's going to help drive the coordination of care between facilities is going to have a huge impact. And th those facilities could be non-standard things like you know going to Walmart clinics or having things in your home or other sort of non-traditional healthcare settings. But the idea is that you want to coordinate care and care delivery across the continuum of care for someone. And, and there's probably a lot of opportunities from just hooking things up to being able to monitor health, to being able to send that information, to be able to process that information, to analyze that information, all that kind of coordination of care is something that's going to be a big opportunity, huge market opportunity. Uh, the payment reform will move to more bundled payments. Uh, basically what that means is you'll get paid to take care of this condition, all right? You won't get paid per the service that you do. And as a result, we're starting to see a lot more alignment between physicians and hospitals because the, there'll be a bundled payment and the, and the hospital will have to divvy out the money to all the services that provide care, so to the lab and the pharmacy and and to the, the surgeons and things like that. So that's, that's gonna be a big thing right there. They're basically gonna have a standard that say, okay, if you get a, a hip replacement, here's how much money you get. You know, if, if you get a bone infection and the, kit, and the person's there for three weeks, that's off your nickel. So that should drive quality, that should drive.